Shadowrun, a mission by independent mercenaries so as to be deniable to the hiring party. Shadowrunner, an independent contractor hired to do Shadowruns. SIN, system identification number used to track your digital footprint in the Matrix. The Matrix, an augmented and virtual reality graphics-based network and successor to the old internet. Mega Corporation, corporations that the corporate court gives status to based on their vast wealth and power. And welcome to Roll For It. Uh, this is our new channel where we'll be streaming every week, uh, same time. We're going to be playing some Shadowrun RPG. So we're gonna, Shadowrun, for those of you who don't know, is like a post-cyberpunk uh, kind of urban fantasy setting. When magic's come back to the world, there are a lot of mega corporations, and there are people, orcs, trolls, elves, and dwarfs, who in theory are all equal, but there's also a lot of racism going on. And we're going to be playing this uh, with Shenry, Stejo, Avak, and Splattercat. So, do you want to uh, go over your characters first? It, bear in mind that in the future we will have some character art and like an intro to the characters. We don't have them yet, so I'm still waiting on getting the art back. So, we're going to do a quick introduction so people know who you are. Um, Avak, Sudo, do you want to go first? Sure, what do you want me to say? Other than uh, my handle is Sudo, you practically give them the best bit of the information. That's an awesome name. I can't top that. Everything else that comes after that is a disappointment. Well, that's, that's true. What, what, do you, what does your character do? What is your role in the group? He mostly sends funny images over augmented reality and gets he, he does. the other characters to snicker at inappropriate times. Also, okay. starts fights that he is not going to be able to finish. He does that too. He is a technomancer, for those who are not away. And a technomancer is someone who is, how should we say, connected to the Matrix in a much more, uh, in a deeper way than like a decker. He's, he's not hacking using programs and software. He just kind of thinks it, and it just kind of happens. Sometimes, sometimes it happens the wrong way. And sometimes a decker comes along and tries to brick his brain, which is not good. And that's him in a nutshell. That sounds pretty nasty. Yeah, brick brains. Don't recommend. Okay. Uh, Stejo, Kaba. Yes. I am Kaba. I am the elf, the face of the group, which also means I'm the, the best looking, the, uh, the most charismatic, and uh, generally the, the go-to leader of the group. That's about right, yeah? Just... Awesome Small. in every single possible way. Small print, biggest douche of the group. Yes. Now that's accurate. <laughs> okay, and what you're, else do you expect? You're an elf with a little bit of magic, aren't you? Yes, I am a um, magic adept. So got a bit of magic. Not mostly just like you know, get people drunk with a touch, and uh, I've got a bit of healing magic. But other than that, Whoa. pretty useless. <laughs> Where did this come from? Get yeah, people drunk with a touch. Mm, <laughs> yes, you've not seen that yet. Just you wait. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, My mind is full of the reasons why someone would learn such a spell, yeah. and they're not good. <laughs> okay, uh, Shen, Pug. In short, my character is Pug. He is a troll with human parents. And he's kind of a uh, leftover. His parents went to Japan, went to work, work for a big megacorp, and the racism there was just too much. Uh, the corp actually tried to get him killed, and his parents figured a good uh, negotiating spot would be to have him sent back to Britain where he can just sit in their fancy posh house and live a nice lifestyle as long as he stays out of the frickin' way. Uh, but since he has so much free time on his hands, he uh, you know, got some rough spots and got beat up and started beating people back, be be beating people up as well. And uh, he, he tends to bring some muscle to the group. He's not very bright, but uh, he can speak his way out of a problem sometimes. Uh, he tends to get himself in a lot of trouble, though. He runs headfirst into a lot of problems. Also <laughs> grenades. Literally. So many shenanigans. And oh, he runs away from those grenades, especially the ones that you accidentally turn on. <laughs> yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and lastly, Spider Cat Blowback. Who are you? What do you do? Oh, uh, yeah. 
My character is Carmine Bishop, uh, known as Blowback in the Shadows. Essentially, I'm the driver and like the engineering guy. Like, if you have anything like that is analog, I'll take care of it. Uh, I drive the car, and on top of that, I got samurai skills, so I got guns and all kinds of other stuff just in case it's needed. I tend to be like throwing lots of shots out there and fighting alongside uh, Shen this entire time, or alongside Pug. But um, that's pretty much my deal. Lots of explosives, lots of engineering, and mostly just driving the vehicle, the getaway car, so that we can get away nice and clean, not get caught. Okay, and you're a dwarf. Mm-hmm. I am. It's pretty good. It lets me get a view that's lower down to the ground. See, everybody else likes to focus from, like, the high view downwards. I get down low, and I look upwards, and so I catch <laughs> angles. I also find lots of nickels, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> That is that is exactly how that works. Yeah. <laughs> Plus five new yen. In a world where currency is entirely digital. <laughs> oh, those nickels. Yep. Okay, so um, we're going to dive straight in now. Bear in mind, the setting for this uh, is, is London in 2078. Big mega corporations, most dominant the globe. Uh, national governments really aren't as important anymore. The reason that mega corporations allow them to exist is because they don't want to take out the trash. Um, London in 2078 is a place that's been increasingly privatized. Uh, more recently, corporations have been allowed a little bit more power, and the government is selling off a load of assets, and it's kind of a free for all. And we get back to our runners in London. So, uh, I believe. Who is Jake Eckhard? That would be Kaber. Yes. You get a call one lovely evening from Jake Eckhard, your fixer. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Breaking social rules, man. Hey, Chama, how's it going? Hey, hello there, Kaver. How are you doing today? Okay, the news. Um, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. How, how are you? Not bad. I got a I got a job going if you are interested. It's well paying. All right, send the details over to me then. And I'll I'll have a wee look. Okay. And a call, uh, and over comes a full, uh, quite large text message which goes over the details about what this uh, person is looking for. Really, it's just mostly stuff like you know you need to be you know experienced runner blah 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 able to keep up with you know. Keep your mouth quiet, etc. It's one of these normal, you'd expect them from almost a corporate type Johnson looking to employ a group like you. Um, basically, it says if you're interested, then you need to, you know, send a text message to this comm number. It's not listed anywhere, it's not attached to an obvious name. And then you need to uh, wait, and then you'll get a, a meeting offered. Uh, it says effectively they're looking for someone to do a job uh, towards the end of the week, so five to seven days' time, you expect. And they say they'll be paying well with a part up front and most uh, afterwards pay cut. All right, so I'll um, I'll just send them a uh, a message to the to the number, and basically tell them that Jake got in touch, said that you're looking for someone who can sort some stuff out for you. Okay. Uh, barely five minutes go by, and you get a message back saying, um, "By the way, what is that club you have? Uh, you've got a club owner as a contact. Can't remember the name of his club." The the club is Cargo and West Cargo. Ham. Yeah. So you get a message Still saying, a uh, "VIP room, Cargo. Ask Mr. Johnson. Nine p.m. today. Now the time at the moment is probably about middayish." All right, I'll um, I'll forward the details on to uh, to Sudo and Blowback, and um, okay. with a little uh, a little bit at the end to say let the troll know. All right, I'll forward the message to <laughs> the troll. <laughs> okay, so we'll get a message saying meet at Cargo VIP room 9 p.m. Ask Mr. Johnson. Living that VIP life, moving on up. <laughs> Uh, blowback right, so gets uh... a message from from Sudo, with just the the sort of regular point where he got picked up by Blowback last <laughs> time, um, or rather where they met on the on the subway. Because if I yeah. recall, it's a little ways off, so he's just letting you know where he'll meet you. And also a uh, little little secondary message there saying, how long do you think it's going to be before either the troll kills Kaber or Kaber kills Pug? 
I sent a message back to Avic saying it'll depend on how long it takes the elf to get his hair done, in all honesty. And then I sent a message on over to Caver, and I'm going to ask him, did we all want to, did you guys want me to pick you up in the van, or did we want to take the tube over there and just meet on our own? Hmm. Well, I mean, like you, you won't need to pick me up. Like, I'm going to send you a message back saying, like, you won't need to pick me up because the the club's in West Ham and I'm in West Ham. So, give okay. the other guys a shout, see if they need a lift. Cool. I forward a message to everybody else, seeing if they want pickup or if they want to take public transport. Um, Sudo replies like straight away, "Yeah, sure, pick pick me up if you're going to bring the van." Okay. Prefer not to be around loads of people. Puggity, puggity, pug, what do you want, man? You picking me up, huh? Am I picking you up? What's going on here? We're going to be friends tonight. We're going to have adventures. Oh, I can't wait to get in the misery van, just as long Uh, as that stupid elf ain't there. The misery mobile. All right. And so it's all set up. I'm going to pick everybody up in the van from where I'm at. Around, I don't know. Dude. Uh, How long does it take to get from where I'm at? I think I was down in Westway, or actually West out in Westway. So how long would it take to go from Westway over to where was it that the club is at? Uh, it's West over Ham. West Ham, yeah, just outside it's of Chelsea. West Ham. So, okay, uh, let me just draw on the map for you. Cool. Um, By the way, when Kaber sent over the details, how much info did he send? It was a straight up followed me. So, just the the contact number, everything about it. Yeah, okay. the details that Jake sent me and the details that I got back from from the Johnson. Okay. Oh, he's in West Ham, not the West End. Yes, West Ham. Okay. That'll be... Yeah, and I'd be in West Way, I guess, with my little tokeny guy. There you go. There. Perfect. I can drag and drop like a champ. I play video games on the internet. I know how to do this. <laughs> in which case, you're looking to go a fair distance. You're looking at a few kilometers across the center of London, so you're probably going to want to start a little bit early. Uh, streets aren't going to be crazy packed towards 9 o'clock, but you should probably start early. You know this because you've already got knowledge uh, London streets, so you probably know that the traffic's not going to be great at that time. It's not going to be terrible, but you're certainly going to have to have quite a wait if you're going to go via van. All right, roll for road rage. Everybody roll for road rage. <laughs> we have be a composure have a roll. Uh... <laughs> All right, okay. so I load the van up with all the normal sundries, so I'd like to assume that we all have, like, all of our various gear. Uh, you guys gave me permission to have, like, all the weapons in the back of the van and stuff like that. And so I'm going to send a text out to everybody. Did we want to meet up in pregame beforehand, or did we just want to wait until the meet? I can pick everybody up a couple hours ahead of time and just kind of do the rounds of London. Uh, it's all up to you guys. Team effort and all that. High fives and handshakes and hugs. Sudo sends back a message, like, I'm not coming out of my chameleon suit i don't think that's exactly going to be low key i'm just going to be coming i'm a duster and some regular clothes i'm probably not even going to bring a gun okay we're just going to meet johnson at a club all right anything more than that probably seen a little bit ott okay i'm just going to send a message saying we're we're meeting a johnson don't come packed okay all right, then. I will forward that message to the troll. How do you tell a dwarf to not troll. to bring his weapons? How do you do that? <laughs> dude, dude, you're troll. You owe your fists to your weapons. <laughs> and my axe. That's all I have. And now I don't have and my axe. It's all <laughs> Oh, oh. I'll, oh. Here elves is shit. <laughs> I'll be I'll be coming with my holdout anyway and my and my jacket because it's got a concealed holster. So. Okay. So While we're on the way. Yeah. Pseudo's going to uh, do a quick matrix search on the number, on the contact number the cable was given. Sure. Uh, make a, oh, what would it be? Just make matrix search, search. Computer yeah. intuition. Matrix search. Yeah. Right. Oh. Come on, dice. Hot dice. I know you got <laughs> got to blow on them though. Do you blow like where if you're rolling digital dice, where do you blow? You don't do like right here. Do you uh, like mic or do we definitely the audio? There's a bare minimum of blowing <laughs> involved. Just don't blow you on the mic. You have to blow the the enter key. Zero volume. <laughs> yeah, and uh, intuition would be five as well. 
Um, now this is just Matrix Perception, so... Uh, sorry, Matrix Searcher, don't get any bonus dice. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, in this universe, the internet has been replaced with the Matrix after the original internet crashed. So what Avic is trying to do right now, using his character Pseudo, is to basically search on the internet, the Matrix, and see if he can mm -hmm. find any evidence of this comm number or who it belongs to. Yeah. It's just doing a Google. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much. much. What's the limit for this? Is it, would it be my uh, Data mental processing, limit I imagine. for something like this? Oh. Well, the ellipse it's moving. normally a data processing. So that would be logic for Technomancer? Uh, uh, right -o. So that would be my limit. Fair enough. Five successes. Five successes. Um, you find that this comlink is part of a batch of um, medium grade comlinks uh, belonging to a Russian owned subsidiary of one of the uh, communication giants. Um, it was stolen off the back of a truck, effectively out of a warehouse, yeah. um, a few months ago, along with right. a case of about 500 other ones. Right They've up. been registered missing, no one knows who they belong to. Uh, it's assumed that they were picked up by someone like Organized Crime or uh, a big wholesaler who just went under the, under the radar to nick a load of comlinks. The important thing for you would be that normally uh, when like someone nicks a whole crap ton of comlinks to be able to, you know, basically use as like duds, normally they'd go for cheapy ass ones because well, you can like steal a lot more because they generate less security or whatever. But these are sort of your medium tier. You, for gaming purposes, are probably rating uh, four comlinks. Okay. So that was that was actually quite a lot of New Year. If they yeah. took out quite a few hundred of them, that was yeah. that was a big heist. That that didn't fall out of the back of the truck. That was pushed. Oops! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I found five hundred right. cell phones in a box on the side of the road. Where the I fuck know. did those have come from? So what a lucky day. Much. I'll, I'll just quickly explain life. to you if you're at home. A, a comm link is basically like your mobile phone, except like even more powerful. Um, it does everything for you. It's also the central hub of all your wireless gear you might have on you. So, for instance, your gun might have an ammo counter, which will feed into your comm link. Your comm link will then tell the holographic display in your glasses how many bullets you have. Um, so, yeah, comm links are pretty much everything. But in this purpose, we're talking about it mainly for the comm code. Uh, I understand a lot of people here are fairly new to Shadowrun, so I will try and explain a few things as we go through, at least in the first few episodes. Yeah, that sounds good. So, while we're all, um, while you guys are heading over to West Ham, uh, I'm going to uh, get on my comm link, and I'm going to give Kevin a phone, the owner of the club. Okay. Oh, bring, bring. <laughs> going to be an interesting call. Bring, bring. <laughs> bring, bring. <laughs> Bring, bring. So does Not the person calling this. always do the ringing, or does the person receiving the call do the ringing? Because I want to impersonate a phone, too, at some point. He's not going to answer. <laughs> we know why. Yes, we do. Bring, bring. Uh, for all intents and purposes, he does not answer the, the comm link. Uh, you get a chance to leave a yeah. message. Uh, it rings on for a few times. It goes, hello, uh, you've reached Kevin Earnshaw, uh, managing proprietor and owner of Club Cargo in West Ham. If you want to leave a message for me, please do so over the tone, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Boop. Hey, Kevin, it's Kiba. Um, You may want to start picking up your phone, because I might have been phoning you to give you your money back. I'm not. <laughs> oh, <good day. laughs> so, the next time, pick up the fucking phone. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, so, bye. -bye. For those of you watching at home, we had a, a practice run where we were just learning mechanics. And um, for all intents and purposes, a shootout happened outside Club Cargo after Kaba convinced Kevin to let him use it as a meeting point and then got him into a little bit of hot water with the police. And now Kaba owes Kevin about, was it 1.5? No, it was two grand. Two grand Noyen. Um, okay. Noyen being the currency in this universe. New yen. Yes. Although, although, it wasn't really my fault. Oh, Because right. I didn't let off any explosives. <laughs> wasn't your fault. It wasn't <laughs> my fault. <laughs> I'd like to point out that those explosives were purely reactive. Pug and I were just trying to defend the group from harm. They were trying to shoot us, and so we decided fine. to shoot more effectively. I was on a roof, Pseudo says, to the, wall. to the rest of the group. <laughs> anyway. Sure, oh, you, can, you can justify it however you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does anyone, anyone do anything else before the meet? I'm pretty set up with everything I got to go. I'm going to bring 
I mean, I'm just I'm just kidding out. That's pretty much all that's going on for me. Okay. okay. And um, Sudo is going to. Sudo is going to invoke the machine sprite bite, and he's going to task it with one of its tasks to run diagnostics on his comm link. Okay. So, um, um, what happens? Rule diagnostics if... when he uses it. Sure. So, effectively, a technomancer can call in sprites, which are effectively like essence from the machine, like there's sort of this consciousness, vague idea of a program that's also semi independent, put together from like the stuff of the matrix. Um, basically, like almost like a temporary AI. And he can then task it to do things. So, he's just tasked it to basically improve his comlink while he's using it. Um, that is basically one of the things the I'll roll the dice a lot. closer to the time because yeah. we're going to have to remember what the dice roll is. So yeah. we'll how long? How long will he stick around for? He's, he's a registered sprite. He'll stay there till eternity on one task. Okay. He'll just hang around until I, uh, if I go offline, he'll just sit there and continue trying to improve it, okay. and till something comes along and tries to kill him, which will eventually happen. Okay. Sure. Um, so, anyone else want to do anything before you hit the club? Right, I'll send a text else. to the elf telling him to start doing his hair early. Just like <laughs> I realized the other with the other conversation was in confidence, but I am kind of serious here. He needs to be gelled up and ready to go by the time we arrive. None of this like 15 like. minutes late stuff. Just to look cute. <laughs> Gotta look good, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, right, well, so... Well, what else? And one other thing Sudo is going to do, he's going to change the icon of his comm link. He's going to change it from an, uh, a blue defender to a Metalink icon. Okay. He's That's going for the, the cheapest one, of the yeah. cheap looking icons. Yeah, this, this, this comm link's going to look like utter drag. Okay. Good to know. Uh, right. Um, so if you're on your way, that means I would like uh, blowback. Would you kindly make a vehicle check? So basically, to do this, you have to add your reaction. Plus your vehicle skill, except the fact that I'm not requiring you to, like, drive quickly or anything. I just want you to figure out the traffic. So if you could do an intuition plus vehicle skill. Intuition plus vehicle skill. So Let's see here. Dice pulls in Shadowrun basically by rolling a load of six-sided dice. Uh, so you add normally two things. You add an attribute and a skill. So we've added intuition, which is a skill, uh, an attribute, <laughs> and vehicle skill, which is a skill. And we get a dice pool of 10d6, and anything of a 5 or above is a hit. So we've got one hit. We've literally got one 6 in that. You didn't you didn't fail, though. You didn't glitch. You didn't critical glitch, which happens when you get a lot of 1s. We'll go into that when it happens. Um, you're fine. You get there on time. You didn't get a massive margin. Uh, you end up there, like, 10 minutes early, because you, you said you're planning off setting in you know, plenty of time. Um, but you didn't get there late or anything. It was a little bit hair of some traffic moment, but you're fine. Yeah. few occasions... Sudo's, Sudo's knuckles were starting to get whiter and whiter as he was holding on to the dashboard. <laughs> starting to look ever more panicked. It goes with his nickname. He's called the White Knuckler. That's what they call him out there <laughs> in West Ham. <laughs> Watch out for that elf. He's the White Knuckler. Yep, that's totally his nickname. <laughs> He's now an elf as well. Oh, no. he, ju he just has anxiety. That's all. <laughs> sure. Okay. okay. So we're at our destination. Uh, so you pull up, you you find a useful parking spot. It's, you know, not too near, um, but at least it's got some streetlights nearby, so you know you're probably not going to get your rim stolen, maybe. Um, West Ham isn't too bad. It's not south of the river, so you're probably okay. South of the river, yeah, goodbye rims. Uh, but yeah, you get out, and you can already hear this sort of vague club music thumping in the background. Uh, you're already getting, like random like passers-by offering you uh tickets and entry to certain places popping up in your ar vision um so in the future everyone has ar vision so a lot of their uh, stuff pops up in your your vision in your contact lenses and stuff offering you you know contacts mobile phones adverts etc um so everyone is right pug now wearing is wearing these goggles oh, hell no i don't need to see that shit pug no, doesn't no, see no, any no. of that pug pug's just like <laughs> he's off chilling. the grid uh, he doesn't have any sort of vision enhancement except for his goggles, which he doesn't have on. So everyone else is getting these uh, advertisement banner flyers and saying, you know, two for one drinks at, you know, cargo tonight, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and 
there's also, you know, a lot of uh, more slightly more seedy things. People see you and they're like, there's a dodgy people, you know, do you want, uh, do you want to, you know, want some score some crash, etc. <laughs> you want to score some crash? Oh, Bob. <laughs> Help him, Bob. Oh, Poor Bob. I hope, I hope you're using this run. Uh, but yeah, basically you go up to cargo and you notice yeah. there is a five minute queue to get in. Um, you've got about eight minutes before your meeting, so you're going to just wait in line. Be fine. I'm not waiting in line. Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> got the hook up. To the, um... <laughs> What's that, man? We go up to the, um, up to the bouncer and be like, all right, man, uh, we're on the list. All right, so the bouncer, an orc wearing a, a bit of a little bit of suit, quite muscly, sort of, you can see the seams of his suit are a little bit, you know, bulking at it. It's sort of, you know, you can see the thread straining. Um, he looks sort of down very briefly, like, you know, he's looking into his AR vision list that he's already got up. What's the name? Keeper. I've got it on my list here uh, that you're not allowed in unless uh, you bring 2009 for the boss. <laughs> What's the device rating of the device that he's using, his AR? Um, you can see quite easily. I mean, standing right near him, you can see his comm link. It's, it's a, a rating three comm link, uh, one of the latest uh, Apple knockoffs. Oh god, Apple, Apple managed to get there. Uh, Apple are owned by Ares uh, Micro Technology. Oh, that makes me sad. That makes me sad in my pants. Uh, right. I'm sorry, well, sir. Unless you uh, you have the money you owe uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Earnshaw. I was going to pronounce that wrong for a moment. Mr. Earnshaw, uh, I'm afraid uh, you're not allowed in. Your friends can go in. His own box. Yeah! <laughs> Going into the club! Uh, he, he kind of puts his hand down, yeah, lower down, to kind of stop the dwarf. His dwarf, you know, is kind of happy. He's like, you will have to pay for entry, though. What? Love. Oh, that's Ow. just nasty, that is. The cat just bit my nipple. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Outside interference. This, this mangy cat sort of scrolls off to the distance, quite pleased with itself. Um, the bouncer nearby <laughs> looks at you guys and says, if you're not going in, uh, he waves some people behind you forwards. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to use resonance veil on his comm link and try to tell her that it's just received notification that the bill has been paid. Okay, uh, that's an opposed test, isn't it? Uh, resonance veil is versus. Uh, intuition and data processing dis to dispel it, but only if it suspects that it's, um, I think it's if, oh no, sorry, it needs a matrix perception test. If it works, then he has to suspect that it's an illusion because it'll be a completely convincing illusion. Okay. And he'd have to succeed a matrix perception test. So his comm link is currently uh, actually um, tethered to the host at the club, mm -hmm. so the club is going to substitute its uh, matrix perception. Mm -hmm. So, I will dice off with you. Okay. Roll for it. I have three successes. Yeah, we gotta do the catchphrase. Roll for <laughs> it! <laughs> I am rolling this at a level uh, four. We will go with software, resonance, uh, no assist, level four. <clears throat> Three successes. Damn it. Would you like to edge? Uh, no. Okay, no. so in the case of a tie, okay. um, Defender effectively wins. Uh, so effectively, Pseudo has just tried to convince the comlink um, that something's happened in the Matrix, and that it's got a notification through saying that the bill had been paid. However, uh, it spotted that it was given, being sent jumbled code. I'm going to go check if they spot that there is a Technomancer around, which is unlikely. They can't, unless they are a resonance entity. They, they, they can see there's something actions. that they need to start checking out. Well, they, can they can see that something's happened, but they don't know what it is. 
yeah, you can see that um, the the host has sent a notification back, um, and it looks like that there is a, a a mark saying they're waiting a security response. From your knowledge of the matrix, you'd know that basically a matrix spider is on his way to have a look at what could be going on over here, just passing. They don't have one in house, so one's coming along. So what's the plan now, gents? Do we pay the guy, or like, what do you all want to do? <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and phone Kevin again. <laughs> okay. Um, bring, bring. <laughs> right, Kevin's loyalty is two, connection four. Uh, I would like you to roll your negotiation plus charisma minus two. I thought you and Kevin were like homies. I didn't realize you guys were only at like two. Oh, no, you lost one last time, didn't you? Weren't no, you three two like question that? mark. No. Oh, mm -hmm. two question mark. The question mark is not picking minus. up at the moment. Minus, uh, Minus two. four, sorry. Because it's his connection. He might be too busy to talk to you. Mm. Not fast. <laughs> it does ring on a few times. And then... Okay, right, well, what do you want? <sighs> hey, Kevin, your, um, your big pile of meat is stopping me getting in the club. Yeah, I ordered him to. Why? You got my two Gs yet? Well, I can't get your two Gs. I'm supposed to be coming into your club to meet a Mr. Johnson. How am I going to earn money if I can't <laughs> meet a Mr. Johnson because you're not letting me in your club? Debtor's prison. It's a bitch. <laughs> Make a persuasion <laughs> roll at minus one. Because he's currently a little bit wary of you. By the way, chat, if the audio levels are off, um, do do give us a shout. We're still trying to work out all the technological uh, things here and there. Two successes. The dice okay, are not hot today. I'll let you in <laughs> if you'll pay some of it up front. You still owe me the two grand. Pay it quarter off now. And I'll waive your entry fee. How much is entry fee? I've not been in this place and paid entry. Please. Our entry is uh, 25 9 per head. All right, so you'll waive entry fee for me, my friends, and I'll pay you the 500 in the end. That's fine. Okay. You hear a ring on the comlink in front of you that the bouncer's holding. Uh, Mr. Kaber, 500. No problem. So I'll. Uh... I'll take out my cred stick and <laughs> give him the 500 new yen off of it. Okay. Uh, he, you quickly slot it in your com link and you send him wirelessly uh, 500 new yen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaber. Uh, and associates, please enjoy your stay. He pulls this uh, sort of AR cordon back and lets you guys pass. And you head on in. All right. I flap my trench coat when I go by him like Batman. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hit him, though. Like, it's just kind of like a, an action. I just, I just want it to be known. Just, blah! If you got the trench coat, you got to flap it every now and again. <laughs> like Samuel L. Jackson. Just, ah! Just throw that thing. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so you head on inside. <laughs> you get in, flapping your trench coat all over the place. Yeah! I just imagine him like a kid with it like over his head pretending he's Batman. <laughs> Making an airplane noise and just flying around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. A couple of people nearby give you some strange looks. There, there is like a dwarf with a trench coat over his head going near. Yeah. They think it's a child <laughs> he's just because yeah. of the height and the fact you've got the trench coat over your head. They don't know. They actually do think you're a child. Um... <laughs> Old disguise. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you go on in. Um, there's basically two floors to this place, and then there's the third floor, which is uh, a VIP lounge at the top with a sort of spiral staircase going up the center. Um, the first floor is a bit more laid back. The second floor is sort of a more sort of rave club type atmosphere, and the, the top is a very kind of reserved area, reserved for members only and people who pay a huge amount of annoying up front. Let's head upstairs. Yeah, we got a meeting to go to. Yep. Okay. 
bearing in mind, by the way, you are now wearing like running about a minute or two behind. Um, no. So you, you start wait. rushing upstairs as fast as you can without being wait, wait, too conspicuous. Uh, club is sort of bouncing into you here and there. A couple of people just almost spilling drinks over you. You sort of weave between them as fast as possible. And you get up to the spiral oh, staircase, no. up to the top. And you are met by another fairly intimidating bouncer. This one, uh, a fairly stocky dwarf. One who you can see sort of muscles flexing underneath his uh, suit. He looks up at you. All right, gents, and looks you up and down. You can see that he is definitely looking at your shoes and your attire, and he looks a little bit suspicious. Can I help you? Some about us. Yes, we're here to meet uh, Mr. Johnson, as it would be in the VIP area. Uh, what's the name? Ebar. <laughs> Immediately, Kaber <laughs> gets a man. Why are you so confused out? about your name, Say. man? <laughs> Kaber? <Idiot. laughs> <laughs> that vocal trail. That, 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 that fucking name is getting me out of so What's many your issues. See, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> We've lost our GM. Yay! Uh, Correct, let's change the rules. <laughs> I think we've actually lost our experiencing yeah. technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. <laughs> so, nice. Uh, yeah, take that. The trail didn't, didn't not work. I just misdirected it at your headphones. So, you yeah, what, what, did you, what did you just misdirect at my headphones? <laughs> you just glitched them out. <laughs> you made like a five roll that was pretty good. Yeah, it was awesome. Okay, so uh, what were you saying? My name is Kaber. Hello. Let me in. Ah, uh, redo. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> you. I think you're in uh, booth 2B, if you would, sir. Thank you very much. He unlocks the door. The door <laughs> swings open. The sound of Maglox disengaging. And you go in, and you notice there is sort of a soft, um, sort of almost velvet like carpet. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Shoes have been taken off near the door. Yeah, Suda's uh, not waiting. He's got his shoes straight off. Okay. He's so like, his if, I have, if I have knowledge of like Japanese language, like I know like taking your shoes off is like really popular. Is that like what we're leaning towards here? Can I check for that, or am I just gonna clomp in with my shoes on? Like, how do I verify whether or not my character's dumb like that? Uh, make an I do not roll. see stuff that's at your eye level. Fine, I see the height plus, check. Uh, <laughs> Charisma plus etiquette. You shouldn't have asked. I'm just going to take a cue from Pseudo and take my shoes off anyways, not understanding the situation. Also, yeah, I'll, I'll have, I'll did you say you're off. wearing your pistol? Um, No, I wasn't going to. I didn't actually specify at all. I said everything was in the van, and okay. so I guess I'm just going to say Is no Is anyone now. else here wearing variable. anything offensive? Ah, Kaba, you've got your... I've got my, I've got my holdout. Holdout in a concealed holster... Yes. Minus six dice, Paul. As you walk through the double doors, you see that the guy behind you turns around, the stocky dwarf reaches down and pulls out his pistol. Has it casually at his side, but you know from experiencing these kind of professional people before that he could quite easily level at you any moment. Sir, are you carrying a weapon? No. No? Yes, yeah, okay. okay, I'm carrying a weapon. Do we kindly yeah. to me, At sir? this point, only pugs and blowback get a message from Pseudo on their calm links just saying, we really need to find ourselves a new face. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> How did we find this guy in the first place? Holy crap. He's going to get his blown off. He's no longer going to have the things that we require. <laughs> Yes, you can have my gun. Okay, you pull it out and give it to him. Yeah. Hand over my Colt new model revolver. Uh, he, he pockets it and he says, I'll be waiting for you uh, with this ticket. Small AR ticket appears in your view and slides into inventory uh, at the uh, the front desk. And Thanks, please, buddy. sir, do not try that again. <laughs> you don't got it. <laughs> 
You can also tell right. that he is, judging by his eye movements, he has just added you to some sort of list. <laughs> um, I was probably on it. <laughs> your name's in red were. and shit, too. <laughs> Okay. At this point, Pseudo actually speaks up, which is a bit uncommon because he usually just communicates only through text across comics and literally just turns to Cave and says, stop fucking around and let's get inside and speak to this Johnson. We're already like 15 minutes late. Yeah, yes, you are sorry. about five, eight minutes late, somewhere about that <laughs> oh, now. Five, um, there goes our bargaining power. We're done for. Okay, so uh, you take off your shoes, you walk in, you notice there is... Uh, a number of different rooms off to the side. Um, some of them are quite well shielded. Some of them are draped off um, sort of walls. And some of them are just booths. Um, the one you've been directed to, 2B, uh, you walk past two others on the way in, uh, one of which has some pretty lively uh, men and women in there uh, behind a, a drape, and the other one of which has a privacy screen. And from what you can tell, probably has some sort of sound dampening quality going on inside because you cannot hear a single thing in there despite being able to see vague shadows. Uh, you get to 2B. Can Pseudo see any devices? You can see lots of, of devices. But there is a, uh, a, a noise dampening field in here for wireless devices. Um, you can see them because your resonance is high enough. I won't make you roll because it doesn't really matter too much. You, you will get hits um, knowing you. But there is at least uh, a rating 2 dampening field in here. <clears throat> um, however, you notice that the 2B you go up to, you cannot see inside 2B. 2B is a... It's conspicuously blank. It is a metal box. Um, there is no wow, okay. wireless device coming from inside it. And from what you can tell, it looks like it has... Most of its facilities are internal. Um, the door's closed. Okay. Right, before we go in, Sudo just holds up a hand just to slow everyone else and then just sort of... His eyes lose focus for a moment, and he summons his second machine sprite. Um, this one is Bit, and he immediately tasks it, help me thread any complex form I attempt to thread. Okay. It's the only command he's given it. Uh, what, what does Bit look like? It's hand. the one that just goes yes or no, just like Tron, right? Yes, yes. That okay. is literally what Bit looks like. So Bit, this tiny little sort of geometric shape that's constantly shifting, appears and goes, yes. And then just goes into your, your comic and just sits there waiting to help. Okay. Um, I'm right. going to make a perception check. Sure. While we're in the room, just for whatever. Intuition plus perception. Uh, there is some glare going on from sort of strobing lights, mostly coming from down below. A little bit of fog and a lot of noise. So I'll put you at minus one for this. Okay. Luckily, your thermographic vision does tend to cut through some of that. Four successes. Uh, what do you Woo! particularly want to look for? Um, just anything that strikes me as suspicious. Like, I guess my character's got an engineering focus, so any sort of, like, reinforcement to the room, any okay. sort of, like, security. Um, you notice uh, a couple of things. Firstly, you notice that the room itself looks like it has um, steel beams and then corrugated steel reinforcement through it, judging by what you'd uh, assume of, you know, the thickness of the walls it looks like and um, the fact that when you brush against them, you notice that they are um, vaguely hollow. So it looks like it is... Uh, fairly tough and has been designed to be able to take a fair amount of impact, but it's mainly designed probably so that it has some sort of internal structure inside these walls. Um, normally, you'd know from sort of knowledge that generally these are filled with stuff like uh, astral barriers or matrix dampening material, or even just insulation sometimes, um, or even something like a Kevlar weave to be able to stop fragments of shrapnel passing through. Um, they tend to be used in like court facilities, etc., for. Uh, containment facilities and stuff. Low-level containment facilities, at least. Uh, you also notice on four hits that the people in the uh, 1A uh, across and back from you one have sort of stopped moving from, via their shadows. And it looks like maybe they are looking in your direction. You can't really tell very easily because the place is sound dampened and has a pretty heavy curtain around it. But from, vaguely from their shadows, you get the feeling that they are watching you. Is okay. that where the nice dancing's coming I, from? No, that was the I other one. I am going to... Mm. I'm going to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cast Detect Enemies. <clears throat> okay. So that's that got, detects uh, anyone with hostile or, intentions, doesn't it? Or Is anyone it, preparing an ambush yet. That's it's a good spell. It's yeah, directed deliberately at you. So anyone with hostile intentions towards you. Towards me, okay. yeah. Which is probably 90% of this up. club, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> one success. Uh, one success. Uh, what do I roll to resist? 
Okay, uh, I think it's probably intuition plus willpower, I guess. I'd, I'd have to double check. Um, I will do this secretly. <laughs> Your brain explodes. Wait, so Good job. Tech, nah, I'm not going to make a game. Um, I'll roll my, I'll roll my resist drain. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you do not spot anyone with hostile intentions towards you. Um, you sort of focus for a minute. You sort of bring your inner energy up and you let it funnel through you and out in a in a sort of sphere around you, um, sort of passing over the psyche of people. And if they have sort of any knowledge of you and their attitude is sort of hostile in that intent, uh, it should resonate off them. Um, you do not find anyone. Uh, of that description. Okay. <clears throat> Certainly not the dwarf that took your gun. <laughs> you do sense a little bit that the troll near you maybe has some vague hostile <laughs> intentions. They are very, you know, they're not immediate. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> but there is certainly some, some bitterness directed at you. Um, Someone in there, so I need to pull this up. Someone in chat just said, so in Stigio's case, detect enemies is basically detect life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. In a nutshell, yeah, yeah. yeah it's exactly the same spell. Right. You're not wrong. You're really not wrong, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For someone who's so lovable. So, you're outside the store. We're about eight minutes late, nine minutes late. Ah, let's go in. We're going. <laughs> Okay, uh, you open the door and you walk in, and instantly you notice that uh, two things. Firstly, there's a troll there sitting in a very expensive suit. Um, we're talking, you know, easily, easily, you know, five grand noyen, easy. Um, and also there is a human sitting by him, um, fairly muscled, obviously uh, packing because he has a pistol out on his knee. Not sure how he got in here, but he does. And the troll is sipping from some sort of very small shot glass, which looks almost like a thimble in his hands. Um, it's tiny. And this guy, you know, he looks a lot like Pug, except for the fact that he is uh, maybe a little bit slimmer. Uh, maybe not quite as muscled as Pug. You're calling um, Pug fat? No, I'm calling Pug ripped. Um, okay, Pug is actually ripped, ripped for a troll. He is augmented to be ripped. But, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Shredded, even. The troll looks up from his thimble, puts it down, very measured sort of look in you, and this very slight half sigh. Which one of you is Kaba? That would be me. And the rest of your friends? This is, uh, Blowback, Sudo. Steve, and oh. I do a little, like, mini half bow. Like, just kind of like a nod. Okay. Won't you sit I down? Um, Sudo looks visibly frustrated at that. Doesn't say anything. <laughs> Need to let me know. However, Caber's comlink is currently just filling with all kinds of spam. Every sort of <laughs> spam. Imaginable. Just to say, <laughs> Pseudo, you you have, because you're the, effectively the tech wizard of the group, everyone gave you uh, admin rights to their stuff. Yeah. Did you just disable the firewall? On his comm link? Yep. I did not just disable the firewall on his okay. comm link. No. Um, what did you do to get the spam? Did you just effectively uh, push load notifications just, his way? I just uh, signed him up for spam. Okay. Literally went to the site and gave them authorization to send him And spam. then and turned his spam filter down a notch without removing the thing entirely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, I made it possible for the spam to get through. I didn't, I didn't shut okay. down the defense to his comm link. Okay. Uh, uh, for gaming purposes, I'll say that temporarily his firewall is down by one. Um, but you've deliberately targeted it through that one notch. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm uh, trying to annoy him. Not getting geeked, basically. Yeah. Kaber, uh, your vision <laughs> starts filling with all these pop-ups saying, um, Last longer, you can get 10 inch longer, more now. Uh, dancing girls, you want them? They're here. And lots of other repeated spam like that. I like how there's some sort of Arabian that's giving me this spam. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all different ah, types. This, this London's very much uh, an area. Of princes <laughs> from that area who are promising you <laughs> amazing New Year deals. Yeah, you, you get this, this immediate like com message saying, Oh, I have been left money in my home country, but I'm unable to get it up. If you send me £100 to be able to get into bank account. Um, I'm sure that if he used the money, he'd be able to get it up. 
Just saying. Anyway, <laughs> right. I, 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 fucking close all the spam. You're, you're closing it. Right. It's just coming up as quickly as you close it. Oh, uh, more is coming through. Yeah. <laughs> He flat out is not going to be able to react fast uh, enough. Kayla, how do you control your AR, by the way? Do you use AR gloves or have you have a trote net? You have an AR yes. gloves, don't you? I've got, I've got AR gloves. So, so, actually... <laughs> <laughs> so Kayla right now is going like this in front of the Johnson who is God just... damn it. <laughs> Why do I hang out with you guys? This team. <laughs> The Kova is literally doing this, right? This is effectively AR gloves are basically, um, they take the movements of your hands, project them onto this display that you have inside of your contact lenses. So Kova is literally doing this for everyone at home right now in a uh, business meeting in a cubicle with a very large troll, Johnson, sitting in front of him, drinking from a thimble. Are you okay? Do you need a minute? Did I need pseudo to quit it? You can send that as a message, pseudo, through your... Uh, your AR, yeah. if you type it. Oh, you can sub vocalize. Yes. You've got sub vocal uh, transmitter. It stops. It stops. Pseudo's made his point. You, you close the last oh, ones. God. None more appear. Hello. Sorry. I had. Um, now, Blowback uh, and Pug weren't, uh, weren't actually privy to what was going on there, so they were looking very confused. Yeah. They just, to them, it looked like Cable had just gone crazy for a second. We've seen it before. We know it's pseudo. <laughs> Usually he gets shot, then he goes kind of crazy. But so eh. while that's happening, <laughs> um, the order. The, the troll Johnson uh, looks at Pug and Blowback in particular, and would you like a drink? Uh, no, thank you for me. Sure, I'll take a drink. What are you serving? What would you like? Single malt? He nods to the, the human next to him. The human gets up, tucks a pistol back into his uh, jacket, leans out the door, comes back in, shuts the door. And as he shuts the door, Pseudo, you feel a very alien feeling. You can no longer feel the Matrix. Ooh. You can mm. feel the other devices around you, but they no longer have any external connection. As such... They no longer really operate as proper wireless devices because they have no data being fed into them. And the matrix requires you having a, a large number of devices to be able to give you processing power. Um, yeah. Completely cut off right now. None of you have devices powerful enough to be able to penetrate uh, what's just happened. My brain! My brain is really powerful! Yeah, roll your resonance times two. Okay. Just a straight up roll? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you wanted to hit? Uh, it's okay. I can read hits uh, off that. Three. Um, three hits. Yeah. Uh, you 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 lose connection. Um, I'm afraid you no longer have connection to the matrix. Darn. As much as you try, it's like, it's tr nope, not there. It's just you you cannot <clears throat> do it. It's like something on the tip of your tongue, but like ten times worse. You just can't quite get there. You can feel there is some sort of vague energy from the radio transmissions and wireless signals and microwaves coming in, but by the time it gets in, it's just dispersed. Um, there's, there's, no, there's no data there now. Okay. Um, it's like having sort of voices muttering in the back of your mind, but not being able to bring them to the fore forefront. You can't actually get hold okay. of anything. Um, for you, this is very disconcerting. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Um, he motions uh, Cable in particular to sit down. Sit. Thank you. Do we have like a table? I mean, Troll's sitting down. What the heck's he sitting on? Yeah, no, the, basically it's like a, a train compartment. There oh. are the two um, sofas effectively built in opposite each other. And then there is a table uh, in between you, sort of more sort of coffee table sized height. Um, I notice this coffee table is actually bolted to the ground as well. Okay. Are they sitting across from each other? Kaber and the other guy that he's negotiating with? Or are they uh, yeah. sitting on the same couch talking, or like... Uh, everyone's sitting opposite, unless you say image. you deliberately want to go, like, sit right next to this guy. <laughs> and just rub his hair a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't reach. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Even while he was sitting. Uh... All right, I take the cue, and I'll sit down on the couch, too. Okay. Simon sits down opposite? 
Uh, yeah, opposite. Alongside Steejo, I guess. I'm sorry, alongside Caber. Okay. We um, I look for a, a, a place to sit, seeming quite distracted, like really just distracted, um, looking around, a bit edgy, and uh, like I'm not really focusing on what's going on. I'm hearing what people are saying, but I can't really pay attention to it. All right, I'm fine standing here waiting for my drink, but I'm not going to sit down next to Mr. Caber. I'm going to grab Mr. Sudo and make sure he gets sat down somewhere near Caber so he doesn't fall over or something. Okay. Um, he waits in silence for about 30 seconds. And then there's a knock on the door. The human gets up, walks up to the door, opens it, accepts a glass of what looks like a double of some sort of whiskey. Closes the door, hands it uh, to Pug, and sits down. The troll raises his thimble, which is now mostly empty. Downs the rest, puts it on the tray. Okay. I assume you guys have been given the initial briefing that I need you to do um, some work in the next five to seven days. Now, firstly, I would like to sign this contract. And you notice that uh, in all your vision, except for, obviously, Pugs, um, whose comlink beeps, because, uh, unfortunately, it's got uh, no way of showing you this via AR, so it just wants you to look at it via the screen on the comlink, um, a contract appears. It is a non-disclosure contract. It goes on for a lot of pages. The general gist of it, the TLDR on the front of the contract is, uh, you will not discuss anything in this meeting, um, nothing goes outside this meeting, especially if you choose not to carry out the contract. You will not discuss this meeting with anyone. And if you do, um, your lives, your bodies, your soul, all of your assets are forfeit. Effectively. Uh, does anyone have oh, knowledge, uh, shadow running, or corporations or anything? Uh, I. I have got... Let me bring it up. Knowledge... I've got rumors, shadow community. I've got personalities in the shadow community. Um, yeah, Sudo, you can roll that at minus two because it will give you some knowledge of the shadow community stuff, but uh, it's not um, massively. That wasn't me. That was Gaper rolling. Oh, sorry. Right. You said Sudo. My bad. My brain, my brain's not working just now. Uh, anyone else can roll a logic minus one if they choose, uh, an intuition minus one if they choose the default. I'll roll that. Yeah, why not? Sudo got three successes. Um, Splat, uh, Blowback got one, Kaber got three. Right, so. Anyone with three successes or more, um, this is a fairly common type of thing for big client Johnsons, notably quite often megacorps or corps, um, who want you to be quiet. Um, for instance, say megacorps will get you to sign this and they'll keep it temporarily. They will then get rid of it because they don't want any evidence once the job is done. Um, these things are Normally, they don't like any evidence tying you to them, um, but sometimes they do want to have just a little bit of insurance to make sure often with a new uh, Shadowrun team that they actually try to at least instill a little bit of maybe kind of fear uh, to extend or at least some sort of professionalism accountability by presenting you a contract. Even if for all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter, they'll keep you anywhere if you try and cross them. Um, normally, organized crime, etc. won't bother because there is that sort of implicit, yeah, if you screw us, we'll kill you. Um, Megacorp's at least trying to project professionalism or power by doing this. Uh, do you want to sign the contracts? Um, I'm going to take a speed read of it and then say, like, oh, I thought this was implied anyway. I don't know why you need a contract. Uh, you have uh, speed reading, don't you? Yes. Okay, so it takes you about a minute. Uh, you can go through a good chunk of the contract in that time, skimming it for general stuff. And a lot of it is just legal jargon. Um, a lot of it is just spelling out the certain points at which they can and can't do anything, blah, 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 blah. And from what you gather, 
it's basically meaningless because they wouldn't ever enforce this against a shadow on a team who talked about what they were asking you to do. Yeah. So, for all intents and purposes, they wouldn't want to bring up what they're going to offer you anyway. Um, yes, it is legally binding, but they're never going to enforce it. Yeah. Yeah. Pseudo signs it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to sign it anyway. Okay, seeing the elf sign it is enough for me. I go ahead and I sign it too. Ditto. Okay. Um, he gets pings onto his comm link, looks down. Unfortunately, it looks like um, someone we want to have uh, three um, walking around has been unfortunately picked up um, recently after entering the country. They are currently in the possession of Lone Star Security Services, and we would like them to not be. Now, they are actually being transferred between locations. They are coming into London. Um for a pre-trial hearing. And during that period, there is a window in which there will be a chance to be able to set them free. He looks at all of you, no one says anything, so he says, effectively what I'm asking is a van heist. Oh, so you've got he's a... quiet at this point. He's just watching what other people do. <laughs> Okay. For pseudo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's like, yeah, okay, you've got, uh, you got someone that's, uh, in Lone Star custody. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to know? Like, how much, how much force are we looking at opposing here? He, he shakes his head very briefly and says, um, from what we understand, they don't, uh, actually know who they have. Um, uh, party we are concerned about was not using their genuine sin at the time. It looks like they were picked up on a fake sin and are in the system as Valentin Koslov. Okay. Um, so, um... Due to this fact while they're, they... While they're saying this, I, uh, yeah. I'm going to send a message to Sido and just say, what do you think? What devices can Sudo see right now? Uh, you can see room. the devices Wait, sorry, that you yeah. have. Yeah. So I can still send messages back and forth even though we're, we're not attached to the Matrix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're connected to all oh, the other devices yeah. in the room, um, but that would okay. be it. Um, and that's yeah. not enough to generate a proper uh, uh, amount of Matrix stuff to be able to give you normal Matrix bonuses. Um, however, you can still send messages mm -hmm. and stuff, that's perfectly fine, Comlinks are designed to do yeah, that. Just making sure. um, uh, you can see the Comlinks that you have. You cannot notably see any other Comlinks or uh, wireless devices. The Johnson opposite you definitely has a Comlink, he got it out earlier. Um, mm -hmm. you perceive me as running silent or has the water switched off. Okay. Um, can I do a matrix perception? Yeah. Okay. Just bring up my cheat sheet. That would be... Plus two for being a technical right, matrix perception. Indeed, I was going to ask about that since you just mentioned that uh, we didn't get you that. You right will now, be at a minus one because you are very distracted right now with any matrix action because it's a very different environment. Okay. It's like being asked to paint with um, half a brush instead of a full easel worth of paints and brushes. Um. <laughs> That's fantastic. Scraping nice. woods down a canvas. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So that would be my data processing, which is logic. Did it roll? Uh, no, I'm just pushing it through now. Okay. I'm just giving the minus one that you were saying. Oh, actually, I need to give the a plus one in total, sorry. Three successes. Okay, uh, yeah, you can see that he is um, wielding a uh, comlink. Um, you can see that his compatriot is wielding a comlink. And you also notice that he has um, a uh, cognitive processor of some kind. Okay. All of which are running silent. 
in reply to Kaber's message, Sudo just pushes a message directly to his comic saying, it's big money on the table. You're the one who makes these calls, not me. All right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I'll just say to the... Uh, to Mr. Johnson, that uh, yeah, we're we're very interested. Um, what or uh, what sort of remuneration are we looking for, or are we looking at rather? Uh, we'll be looking at. And he looks at you for, and you can see that gears turning in his head. That you said for start, you realise you were very interested. You turned up late. And you were kind of being weird earlier on with your hands just randomly typing in AR, which is kind of rude considering you've got someone in front of you who you came to a meeting with. What? We'll pay you 4,000 up front and 8,000 when the job is done. This isn't, this isn't a two-bit operation that we've got going here. Like, you're asking us to knock over a Lone Star van transporting a prisoner. That's going to be some heavy stuff. I mean, that that's not a very big payout. I'd, I'd be expecting uh, double that. Make a situation check. At minus two. Because of your yeah. hand dancing earlier on. And plus two for uh, first impressions? Yes. Because I'm just so goddamn <laughs> So Kaber has yes. his uh, quality called first impressions, meaning he gets plus two die anytime he meets someone for the first time. Bloody gorgeous elves. Yeah. That's a lot of hits. Let me roll mine. Oh, wow. What's your limit on that? Probably around six or five. On for social, my yeah, social yeah. limit is nine. Oh wow! It's based Holy on essence, shit. and he's got full essence. Um, oh. That's why I'm here, guys. <laughs> my essence is kind of gnawed on. <laughs> Would you like ugly. to use uh, any uh, edge, Kaba? Do I want to use any edge? I can. I got. Yes, I would. I would like to use an edge to reroll my failures. Okay, so basically, uh, edge is like a, a luck type point for those of you at home. Uh, it allows you to reroll failures and do a few other things. So effectively, uh, six out of fourteen. That means Kaber is going to be roll rolling eight. Currently, it's six versus five, which is a win for Kaber, but only just. Yep. Uh, that's another three success. That makes it nine versus five. So you've got a, a four net hit. Yeah. He looks up at you after thinking hard. Okay. Two grand. Each of you up front. Another two and a half grand to each of you when the job is done. All right, we'll go with that. He nods. Excellent. If you have any uh, issues or need any uh, more help, or guidance, or anything, uh, call this com code. Please do not try to bother me with trivialities. But uh, if you do need something desperate, call this number. Otherwise, I'll expect you to call when you have the uh, person in question. No problem. Excellent. The current troop transport, uh, troop transport, police transport is estimated for 3 a.m. on Friday. Apparently for you guys, uh, it is a Monday. Oh, wow. And he sends you a small data burst which contains a uh, route plan. All right. Okay. Well, I look forward to doing business with you, Kaba. All right, thanks. Let's get going. He nods to the rest of you as you get up. 
the moment the moment it seems that the the meeting is wrapping up pseudo just climbs to his feet and starts going towards the door he doesn't okay. go doesn't go through it but he standing ready to go through. Yeah. The, the human <laughs> uh the human with the troll gets up walks towards the door opens the door for you pseudo goes straight out okay pseudo's like a broken robot without the matrix i know he's so sad i feel bad right now <laughs> okay well, i'm gonna put my glass back on the table and say thanks for the drink and head out he nods to you and uh you you leave yeah, well, stand up and nod when he acknowledges, and I walk I'm out to you behind to, the troll. Um, as we're as we're leaving, I'm going to put my hand on Pug. Oh God! And I'm going to cast intoxication. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> why? This fucking elf. <laughs> We almost made it without any shenanigans. Uh, Pug has to resist with, what is it, willpower? Oh uh, god. Intoxication. I've only got two for that. It's counterspelling plus body. Body, okay. Oh. That's a lot better for you. Yeah. Do I roll with a negative one because I don't have counterspell? Um... No, you, you just roll flat body. Um, effectively, you, you don't have to counterspell it. Someone else could help you by counterspelling it, but you've got no new team to counterspell. Oh, jeez. There's no need for this. There's, there's no need. Uh, oh, roll, you need to roll it hits. as a shadow dice roll rather than using the... Uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But that yeah, is yeah. still three hits, so... Three successes. Um, you feel this odd sensation um, come over you. It's vaguely like being slightly drunk for like a, a split fraction of a second. Uh... But you're fine. Resisted. You you realize that Caleb probably tried to do something to you when he touched you. You're not sure exactly what. Just smack <laughs> his stupid, silly hand off me. Okay. <laughs> Pseudo's waiting for you outside. His boots are on. He's already got his shoes on. He's gone. Yeah. yeah. He's just there like waiting for you. Okay. The the dwarf on the, the VIP door gives uh, you a, lot, a bit of a look, particularly Kaber. Uh, you head downstairs. Music's still blasting away. Go collect my gun. Okay, as you go to collect your gun, you see Kevin, the owner of the club, watching from a distance. Oh, he noticed you have money. <laughs> you get the job, did you? <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He's just watching from one of the upstairs balconies. As we walk out. He doesn't he's seem to acknowledge you other than man. just making sure he's eye contact with you. Do you have the... Uh, the what, what brand of comlink was it? And what icon does Kevin have? Uh, or rather, what icon is on it, if it's just standard? Uh, the icon uh, Kevin has is of someone in a sort of long, um, sparkling coat um, for his persona. The icon is just a default icon for that uh, that comlink. Okay. Um, it's a it's a Sony rating five comlink, whatever the latest brand of comlink is. Sony Emperor, I think. They they have many in the line. I think the Sony Emperor isn't a five though. Um, oh. I'll remember. I'll just make a note that it's the uh, Sony 5. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, you exit. Mm -hmm. no nothing happens. No incident. You pick up your uh, your hold-up pistol, Kaber. There is a note with it. Right. As you pick it up, a little AR tag appears in your vision. It says... Please do not bring guns into my establishment again. <laughs> Fucking Kevin. <laughs> he learned his lesson last time. He didn't well, ask enough questions. So the holdouts he needs to be worried about is the <laughs> grenade launchers. <laughs> we turned his backyard into like Fallujah. <laughs> it was a mess. Yeah, uh, for everyone watching, they let off uh, two underslung grenade launchers. I directly hit and blew up a minibus. It was popular with bad guys directly outside the back alley of the club. Um, After we said there'd be no trouble and everything yeah. was just going to be fine. Don't yeah. forget all this the no fire. <laughs> we told him they shot first, but he didn't want to hear it. He's being unreasonable. Well, when they shot first, <laughs> yeah. they were shooting up his joint. 
We were protecting the club in reality. Exactly. We should be rewarded. The grenades all went away from the club. Yep, that's <laughs> so more parallel to the club, but then away once they got to the corner. <laughs> However, the bits of bad guys were propelled at high velocity towards the club <laughs> and stained the walls of the club. <laughs> On a busy, like a busy weekend night. I think he's more worried about the grenades going off, the cops being called, and the fact that the bad guys were firing approximately 100 rounds of ammunition at you and painting the back wall of the club with bullet holes. Yes. We that, can't that help that we're popular. Really? Yeah. Um, so you leave the club, you now get your job, uh, which is to intercept a van and pull uh, someone by the name, which is you've been told is a fake sin, Valentin Koslov from the back and uh, hand him over to someone or ever after making a phone call. This is basically the meat part of the run. They have had the meat. Now it's time to do legwork. 